This is Pastor Jeff Chavis. I'm the pastor of Church Online. We're a unique online community of faith. You can find us online at churchonline.com, but we spell that uniquely C-H-R-C-H, because as we say it, all that's missing is you. This morning is, it's January the 12th. We are 12 days into the new year, and I don't know if you've heard this. I don't know if this is marked on your calendar. Today is Quitter's Day. What is Quitter's Day, you might ask? Well, according to experts, this is the day, the second Friday of the new year, is the day that most people have quit or will quit their New Year's resolution. Now, I don't know if you have made a New Year's resolution. I know a lot of people I've spoken with probably have given up on that by now, and and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with New Year's resolutions, but for some reason, most of us tend to give them up, again, by the second Friday in January, Quitter's Day. But I have heard that a lot of people have done something unique, Christians, and uh, instead of being guided by a resolution, I'm going to resolve to do something. And and for most people, it's something health-related. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to eat better, whatever it might be. Instead, let's be guided by a verse or even a single word that's going to guide their day. And maybe you'll put that on your desk. You'll put that in the mirror that you look at. If you don't have a verse or you don't have something to guide you, I found a 2024 verse. Believe it or not, I was searching the scriptures thinking about this idea, and I found a verse that I think all of us should be guided by, and I'm not suggesting that you make this your 2020 verse of the year, but if you want to, that would be a great thing. But let me read this to you. It's Acts 2024. By the way, there's not a lot of 2024 verses. I'll let you know that. Um, Many books don't have 20 chapters, and of those that do, some of those chapters don't have 24 verses. So there's just a very few that we could call 2024 verses, and this is Acts 2024. It's the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, but none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish the race with joy. And the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. When you hear those words, of course, uh, I'll let you know what these things are in a moment. We always have to go back and put it into its proper context. But what I get from the Apostle Paul in this verse is that he is focusing in on one thing, this ministry that he received from the Lord. Now, specifically, he says to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And of course, all of us have that responsibility at some level to be able to testify about what God has done. But I also want us to focus in on that idea that we have all been given a ministry. Now, again, when you hear those words, most of us might think, well, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a minister. But that's not true. All of us have been given something. Now, I would suggest that that's probably the greatest way we could enter a new year is by saying, Lord, I just want to focus in on the ministry, this thing that you called me to do. But then, like I said, what's the these things that he's not even going to concern himself with? If you've if you've heard me long enough, you know I love to put things into context. I don't just like to take a verse out of Scripture, and I like us to see where it belongs. In this story, it's in chapter 20, obviously in the book of Acts, and at this point, the Apostle Paul has gone on three great missionary journeys. He's planted churches. He's been doing exactly what he said, testifying to the gospel of the grace of God. That's what he's been doing all the time. But he has this sense, this vision, this guiding from the Holy Spirit that it's time for him to go back to Jerusalem. Now, he's warned along the way. It's not going to go well if you head back there. He knows bad things might happen if he goes back to Jerusalem, but he must press on. So he heads back, and among other things, he stops at a place that he spent the most time with, Ephesus. And in this passage, and I'll go back up to verse 18, chapter 20, verse 18, and he's speaking to the leaders of the church at Ephesus. And he says, in verse 18, and when they had come to him, he said, you know, from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility with many tears and trials, 
which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly from house to house, testifying to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see now, I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that the chains and tribulations await me. And then here's verse 20, 24. But all these things move me. None of these things move me, excuse me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of our Lord. Those words and the context that it's in, the Apostle Paul is saying, I'm not concerning myself with what's ahead. Now pause for a minute and imagine that you are going to do that in your year ahead. I'm not going to concern myself with what's ahead. Because we have that tendency to get a lot of anxiety in things. Honestly, I, I've I've had that even this morning. Something has come up in my life that is making me look ahead. But I've got to get back to what Paul says. I in verse 22 specifically, he says, I'm going bound in the spirit to Jerusalem. I've got to do this thing he's called me to do, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. That's one of the things that we have to get a perspective on. God's got this all under control. God knows what he's doing. God doesn't need our help in it even. And that's hard to say and it's hard to live. But imagine if that's what guided our 2024 ahead. I'm not going to concern myself with what is might happen, may happen, could happen. But instead, I'm going to go forward in the ministry that God has called me to do. And that's really what this is all about. How many times he says he's proclaiming it, testifying it, teaching it. He's moving forward in this thing that God has called him to do. And again, imagine that that was the thing that was leading us. Imagine if we entered this new year with that attitude. I'm not going to worry about what's coming, but I'm going to focus in on the ministry God gave me. Now, again, as I say that, maybe there's somebody thinking, I don't have a ministry. Or do I? Yes, we've all been given a ministry. Maybe that's the first thing that we focus on is say, Lord, what are you calling me to do? What is my ministry? And we're going to pray here in just a few minutes. And that's the first thing I want to do. I want to pray that God will show us how he wants to use us, how he's given us a ministry and for us to just give ourselves completely to that. The other part of our prayer is, of course, Lord, help me not to focus in so much on what's ahead, not focus in on February, March, April, but let's be present right here, right now, and give ourselves totally to that ministry he's given us. That's where this 2024 first comes in. So let me encourage you again, maybe review it, maybe read it over, maybe pray about it. Just think about it. Acts 20, 24. How can that guide you in this coming year?